The other thing to bear in mind, when you're doing this in practice, you'd probably work your way all the way down the leg, taking your transverse section images. Um, and then once you've finished with that, uh, you go and take your longitudinal section images afterwards. And um, for the sake of these videos, whilst we're, whilst we're going down taking the transverse images, we'll also have a look and compare that against the longitudinal images. So we were up here in zone 1A. Hey, good lad. Good chap. We're just going to rotate our probe. And again, bearing in mind what I said earlier about the fact that uh, by convention, we're keeping lateral uh, to the left of the screen. We're also going to be keeping, when we're in doing the longitudinal section videos, uh, uh, images, sorry, we're going to keep proximal to the left. So all we need to do is rotate our probe 90 degrees clockwise. So we've got our marker at the top of the leg. And then we get our longitudinal image. And what we're aiming to do is get all those fibers lined up roughly horizontally on the screen. And as best we can through the uh, midline of the tendon. What you do want to take care to do is once you've done that, just slide the probe across the leg to the medial side, just to check the edge of those fibers. And we'll also then slide it to the lateral side. The reason we're doing that is because sometimes if you have a, a hole in the tendon, a, a core lesion, you might find it only occupies a percentage of the, of the width of the tendon. And it's easy to, to potentially miss those if, you, if you're just looking at one, uh, one thickness, if you like. Once we've got our image, we optimize it as best we can. And then we're going to freeze that. If, in fact, we can come slightly proximally there and freeze. So again, looking at that, that picture now, at the top, we have the superficial digital flexor tendon. That's exactly the same as on our transverse images. And then immediately below that, we've got the deep digital flexor tendon. It can actually be quite difficult to separate those two uh, in this longitudinal view. Their borders can be a little bit less distinct than on the transverse section. Then we've got a little bit of fluid as we had in the, uh, in the um, carpal sheath as a, as a distinct separation between the um, dorsal border of the deep digital flexor tendon and then into the inferior check ligament or accessory ligament of the, of the deep digital flexor tendon. Once again, you can see that the fiber pattern on that structure is, is denser, appears denser, and, and the fibers appear shorter. And that's because of the oblique nature of that structure as it runs from uh, proximo dorsally to disto palmarly. Below that, we then have the origin of the suspensory ligament. That's the body of the suspensory ligament at this particular place. And then our thin white line underneath that is the proximal um, part of the uh, third metacarpal or cannon bone, just the, the palmar border of that. And in fact, on this image, you can see where the uh, suspensory ligament is starting to insert onto that structure. It's quite important, as we said before, that as we go through taking these images, you just remember to save them and label them as well. And we've obviously already discussed how to do that. But just make sure this is a clinical record and it's worth keeping those images as you go through. <laughs>